Hey everyone, welcome back to TK's Tech Talk. Today we're going to be having a look at this Asus Tough Gaming B660M Plus Wi-Fi D4 motherboard, which is a DDR4 board and can be used with 12th gen and 13th gen Intel processors. So for the 13th gen, you will need a BIOS update for this motherboard, possibly using flashback, which I believe this motherboard has. So let's just have a look at around the box and see uh, what features we have first. So let's just go to the back of the box, maybe zoom in just a little bit, and I'll just go through some of it. So we have uh, some USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and a Gen 2x2 Type-C port, Wi-Fi 6, 2.5 GB LAN, and four DDR slots, as long as as well as sorry, as well as a PCIe 5X slot for your graphics card slots. That with the main silver PCIe slot there. So let's just open this up and see what we get inside. So straight away, we can see the Wi-Fi antenna, pretty typical for Wi-Fi motherboards. And then, as usual, a nice flap which we take over, and the motherboard is exposed. So let me just take the motherboard out and see if there's anything else inside the box before we carry, before we talk about it. SATA cable, certificate of reliability, the manual, an ancient CD-ROM, and I think these are some stickers. And then it also looks like we have something in here, like it looks like some pads. Not sure what that's for, maybe for the Wi-Fi antenna. So let's just get rid of this box. Okay, so let's get the motherboard out of the package now and have a quick look around. So let's start with the front of the board, or the main part of the board. CPU socket, obviously, a four pin and an eight pin connector for the power, a CPU fan, and CPU fan 2 header and the AIO header is here. Then we have one, two, and three five volt ARGB connectors. We have one, okay, that's a one 12 volt four pin RGB header. And then we have the power connector. We have a USB 3.2 Gen 1, which I believe is five gigabits a USB 3.2 Gen 1 USB-C header as well. We have two SATA ports here, two SATA ports here, so a total of four. The chipset heatsink, the front panel connector, that looks like it could be a USB header, I'm not sure. These two are definitely USB 2 headers. We have another chases fan here, and chases fan here, so this is chases fan one, two, and three. And then we have the Thunderbolt header, and we have a, another COM port here, not sure what that's for. And then we have an audio front panel connector here. So it's got quite a lot of connectors. It's, it's nice to see both RGB and ARGB, and I think you can use that with the Asus uh, lighting system. Then let's move over to the M.2 slot. So we have one and two M.2 slots. Now this one here has got a cover on it, a heat sink uh, on the M.2 slot. Now this can actually be moved to this one. So it's quite nice that you can swap between the ports because you might want to make like an SN850 or 980 Pro with the heat sink pre-applied and you can just move the heatsink to the second slot, if you want to do that. Then this top PCIe is a PCIe 5X16, so at least it's future-proof. It will allow for those PCIe 5 graphics cards when they finally arrive on the market. And then we have a PCIe 1X1, and then we have a PCIe X16 slot, but if you look carefully, I believe this is pinned out for only X4. So you, the pins don't go all the way. Let me try and uh, show that to you up close so you can see the pins don't go all the way and the one above is the x1 and this is an x4 if i remember correctly right so if you're thinking about putting a graphics card in here do remember that it's going to be limited to pcie gen 3 x4 even though it's an x16 slot so you could maybe stick another um, m.2 card in there for another nvme ssd and of course we have the four ddr4 slots which i can't remember the speed let me just have a quick look at the box see if it says it on here and it does indeed say ddr for 128 gb up to 5333 with overclocking so that's nice to see there 
and then finally just to mention it's a six layer PCB and it has a 10 plus one power stage design for the VRMs. Okay, let's move over to the rear I.O. panel. And let's see if I can zoom. Oh, got some fingerprints on that. Still got that plastic on there. Okay, so we have a HDMI port. We have a display port. We have two 10 GB ports, a USB 2 port, and there's a plus there. I think that's got PowerShare. That looks like a 5 GB USB 3 port. This looks like a 20 GB USB type C port. So 10 GB is USB 3.2 Gen 2 and 20 GB is USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 and the blue one for th the blue 3 G 5 gigabits port is USB 3.2 Gen 1 is so confusing. Two more 10 gigabit ports, a 2.5 G Ethernet port, Wi-Fi 6, no Wi-Fi 6E if you're looking for that and the I believe 7.1 audio setup there. And let's take a quick look at the back of the motherboard. There's no fancy back plates or anything like that. And looks pretty standard and straightforward. So that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions. I would be using this myself with an i9-12900K. So I'll let you know how that gets on. Or feel free to watch that build video. I'll be getting that up soon as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.